curve y equals to bx cubed plus ax plus dx stationary The curve passes through the point four and three. Find the value of a and the value of b. Okay. Oscar, what is the first keyword that you read? What is the first keyword that you read? Has a stationary point. Okay. Can you tell what happens at the stationary point? Uh, what happens at the stationary point? Look at the first point that I have written on the screen. The uh, left upmost. At each stationary point, what happens? Dy dx equals to zero. Correct. So please do the dy dx now. Six x to the power of two plus two a x plus b. Okay. They already told us you are getting a stationary point with x value three. So stationary point simply means dy dx equal to zero, and you can substitute x equal to three now. So you write add x equal to three. Uh, what happens? Solve. And Caroline, you share the answer. What do you get? Are you with me so far? Okay, let me ask uh, Jessica. Jessica, how many unknown I have in the uh, equation now? How many unknown? Uh, two. Yes, which is the A and the B. So if I have two unknown, then I need two equation. So far, I already use the first information here. I've already used the first information. The other information left for me is they are telling the the function passes through four and two. So you can substitute this into the y. Substitute this. This will help you to get the second equation. Two unknown, you need two equation. So substitute. Let's see what you get. Go and put your value of x, put, and then you simplify. Solve the equation simultaneously and you have to tell me what you are getting. Okay, you calculate now. Harry, should I do substitution or should I just go for elimination? What do you think, Harry? Elimination. Eliminate. I'm going to eliminate, yeah? So I'm just going to do 1 minus 2. Can you help me with the solution, Harry? Uh, 2a is equals to 30. Are you sure 30 or negative 30? 30. Uh, negative 30. And then what is A? Negative 15. Negative 15. Use the same concept and find for me the B, please. Share your answer. I will wait.
You put wherever PS4. you like and share it. What did you say? B is 40. B is 40. Can some, anyone want to defend his answer? William Hanson, what is the answer, boy? 4B. Yeah. Harry said it's 40. Are you sure it's 40? You substitute yeah, into... 36. This is going to be 36. You got the A value and B value. Let's recap. What are we doing? We saw the word stationary point and we know the slope at stationary point will be zero. So we did dy dx equal to zero. Since they already told it is having x coordinate of three at the stationary point, we substitute. And we realize we have two unknown and we needed another equation. That's when we end and substitute the four and two. And then we are solving simultaneously. Okay. Now Joshua, you read the second part of the question, boy. What do they want? I got my A value, I got my B value. Can you read the second part? Find the coordinates of the other stationary point on the curve and determine, and determine the nature of the point. Okay, thank you. Okay, now again, Joshua, anytime you see the word stationary point, what can you tell about the gradient, boy? It does it. It's straight. Yeah, straight line. So what is the slope exactly at that straight line? Zero. Ah, correct. The slope is actually like a straight line there. So dy dx is equal to zero. Do you think I already have my dy dx here? Look at up here. Do I have my dy dx? Mm, yeah. Yes, take that and equate to zero now. Let's do it. So I'm going to take the dy dx which I already have. Now I'm going to substitute the a value. You cannot write like this. Uh, you cannot continue with this. Now you have your a value and b value substitute. And then you solve. Why did I reject x equals to 3? Answer Jocelyn. Um, because in the question, it already says that there's the stationary point when x is equal to 3. Correct. Because x equal to 3 is already the other stationary point. We want a new stationary point now. Is my answer correct? Not yet. It's not complete yet. I only got the x coordinate for the stationary point. I need to find the y. Go and find the y. Go and find the y. Substitute into the y itself. Yeah? Don't go and substitute into the dy dx. You substitute into the curve. And Ted, please share your answer. Negative two. Very good boy. Good job. So please write nicely. Other stationary point is two negative two. How many of you understand the lesson so far? Like you 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 know what's happening. If you if you understand, you shake your head. I'll see from the screen. Okay. Sophia is saying left hand side. She's shaking left hand side. Now why? Slowly. Now, there is a new word now, nature. Nature, are we in a jungle? Yeah, mathematic jungle. Nature, nature means what means? Nature means nature of the stationary point. Like, sometimes if you sketch parabola, I know by looking at this, oh, this is a minimum point. 
If let's say you were to sketch something like this, you know that this is maximum point and this is a minimum point. But if I am solving algebraically without the sketching, how do I know? I'm so lost in the jungle that I don't know how to find the nature. Okay, so I am going to teach you a concept. From there, we're going to go on. It's very simple. You as an IGCSE student, you know if the second derivative is more than zero, you claim that this is going to be a minimum point. If your second derivative is less than zero, you're going to claim it as a maximum point. So let me write the step. Like a stupid person, let's just follow. Part one, find second derivative. Mostly you get expression. If you get value, then you are very lucky. Second, input the x of your stationary point into 1. Why? Why do I do this? Because I want a value for second derivative. Why do you want a value for the second derivative? So that you can make conclusion. Conclusion based on what? Based on this. But how do you know, Miss? How do you know the conclusion works like that? Ah, this is the thing that I'm not telling you yet. So slowly, let's go and do. Go and take your dy dx. Go take your dy dx from the upper part. And then you differentiate now. Do second derivative. Edward, can you help? If this is my dy dx, what is the second derivative boy? Cos x minus 30. Is this an expression or value? Expression. Yeah, it's an expression. So according to the second step, I have to take the x of my stationary point and I have to input now. So what is our x just now? We got two and the other one is three. So you have two stationary point now. So do one by one. When x equals to three, what happens? When x equals to two, what happens? Tracy, can you please help us? Input and tell me girl. What are the value we are getting? Or anyone who found the answer? No one? Miss, and last, yeah, yes, that? Isn't nature of a point just uh, figuring out if it's a minimum point or a maximum point? Yes, correct. Then why should we find the D about the second derivative? Yeah, that's a story that I haven't told you yet. But I already taught you the concept. I said if the second derivative is more than zero, it is a minimum point. If the second derivative is less than zero, then it is a maximum point. The lesson I haven't done yet. I am only feeding you the concept. Once you are done with this, I will explain. But somebody help me. What is the value of the second derivative? Fill up this blank please. Six and negative six. Yes, yeah, six and negative six. Okay, now Amanda, if it is now second derivative is more than zero here, 
what can I tell about x equal to three here? Is it minimum or maximum? Minimum. Yeah, this is going to be minimum. Now look at this. This is less than zero. Less than zero means this x equal to two here. Is it minimum or maximum? Look at this. The second derivative value. Yeah. That's how you make the conclusion. Okay. Exactly like what that asks. That is asking now. How do you know the rule works like that? I cannot see this. I cannot see it. You cannot expect me to accept the fact. Explain further. Okay. You put your pen down and now it's your story time. Okay, it's a story time. What are we doing? We are doing slope of a slope. It means I am going to literally draw for you a minimum first. This is minimum by I. I know. Let's say this point here, point P. I know point P is minimum. Okay, by looking at it, I already know. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to ask you this question. Let's say I got a lot of points along this, this curve over here and then I'm finding tangent. I'm finding the steepness of the slope here. Okay. I want Ivan to help me. Boy, what is the slope here, Ivan? Exactly at the minimum point, what is the slope? Why is he not answering? I don't understand what you mean, Miss. Yeah, I see. This is a minimum point, right, boy? This is a minimum point here. What is the slope? Apaka steepness unto point ini? Exactly at here. What is the steepness? Is there any gradient there? No. Ah, correct. Thank you for answering. Now, I want you to inspect on the left-hand side. Yeah, just look at the left-hand side. Okay, let me ask Shannon. Shannon, is the slope positive or negative, Shannon? On the left-hand side. Negative. Very good, negative. So, maybe I can say, oh, miss, I think the dy dx is negative 4. Look at this. Negative 3. It's becoming smaller until it reaches 0 here. Or maybe I'm getting a negative 2. Or maybe this one is negative 1. Okay, now I want you to observe on the right hand side. Bring your focus to the right hand side and then inspect the slope. Apaka gradient on this side. Okay, let me ask Carmen. Carmen, on the right hand side, is the gradient increasing or is it becoming negative? Increasing. Increasing. So like what? Maybe dy dx equal to 1. Maybe dy dx is equal to 2. It's just increasing. So what is the most beautiful part for the entire, entire function? So to do that, you bring your focus to here. I am going to label an X. And I'm going to ask you some question now. Okay, how do I do this? Consider moving from left to right along the curve. Don't see point by point now. Now you have to see throughout. Consider moving from left to right. Okay, I want somebody to help now. Kimberly. The dy dx, you fill up my blank, is dash starting with dash. Everybody think, yeah, fill up my blank. Okay, fill up Kimberly as much as you know. You see throughout the curve now, don't see point by point. What can you tell about the overall gradient? The dy dx is what? You see from here, put your eye here and then you drag along the x-axis. What can you tell about the dy dx? Um, on top of the x-axis. On top. 
what can you tell about the dy dx look at it negative 4 negative 3 negative 2 negative 1 0 1 2 3 4 what is happening is it smart girl the dy dx is increasing starting with what kind of value negative yes smart to what and then in the middle it is becoming what Neutral. To positive value. So what am I doing by focusing on the x-axis at one go? Huh? What am I doing? The rate of change of dy dx is positive. I can conclude this. What is the meaning of this? I don't understand. It's too, too difficult for my brain. You use the word rate of change and then you say dy dx. How do I write this? Slope of a slope. Now, this is the second derivative. The slope of a slope along the x-axis is becoming positive. How do I write that? Second derivative. Positive simply means more than zero. That's why you always say, if the slope of a slope is more than zero, it has to be a minimum point. Okay, it has to be a minimum point. This is a lengthy concept. If you understand, you understand. If you don't understand, you watch again and again until you catch the concept. Now, let's move on. I hope I've answered your question that. So let's go and solve question number seven, eight, nine now. Yeah, maybe Chris, you read question number seven now. Chris, read question number seven, boy. Seven, right, miss? Seven, miss? Question number seven. Curve for x cubed plus ax squared plus bx equals to minus 30 has no stationary points. Show that a squared is smaller than 6b. Okay. Now this is a bit challenging. Never mind, since we started, we just solve it, yeah? Uh, let me ask uh, who? The Kim. Kim, Kim, they're saying the function don't have a stationary point. It means, I mean, you know it's a cubic. It's not going to be like this. It, it's not going to have a maximum point, not going to have a minimum point. You know, don't have a stationary point at, at all. Maybe the function is just like this, going up, but there is no stationary point. They asked me to prove something now. What do you think you will begin with, Kim? What do you think you will begin with? Since they already gave you information, it has no stationary point. I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat again? Uh, get the second derivative. You want to get the second derivative? Are you checking the nature? How to quickly find the second derivative? You are skipping step. What is the first step? Finding the? The derivatives. Find the dy dx first. Although they say no stationary point, you still go and make an attempt to find the stationary point. Okay. If there's no it, stationary point, does that mean that the stationary point uh, value is zero? No, exactly at stationary point, the gradient is zero. But now you have no stationary point. So what can you tell? The dy dx is not equal to zero. 
Uh, this is the assumption you are making now. dy dx is not equal to zero because at stationary point I must get a gradient of zero. So when I ask him what is his thought process, he should have answered, "Miss, find the dy dx and say it's not equal to zero." Okay, never mind. Let's continue. Kim, find the dy dx for me, boy. Find. Uh, six x square plus two a x plus b. Okay. Okay. So I know that I don't want the dy dx to be zero. What does it mean? What does it mean? I let you think for a while. Okay. So the original curve. How do you in, in uh, continue the thought process? You are telling the original curve has no stationary point, and that will only happen, only happen if and only if, if and only if. This is if and only if. Yeah. The gradient has no zero. What is the meaning? You mean this quadratic has no solution. When will the quadratic won't have any solution? When will the quadratic has no solution? What concept should I use? Uh, discriminant. Very good. You use the discriminant. B squared minus 4AC. Should I do less than 0, more than 0 or equal to 0 now? Can somebody help? I don't want any solution. So the discriminant is inside here. What will you put into the D so that the X is unsolvable? Less than zero. Smart. Very good. Less than zero. So you solve 2A squared. 6B less than zero. Can I know who was answering just now? I mean, you answered all of my question correctly. Shown. Oh, I thought you were still asking me this. Oh, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? Okay, let's try one last question, number eight. Let's try one last question. Miss. Yes, you muted me, I think.
Okay, Natalie, please read. Sorry. Number eight. Yeah, number eight. A curve has the equation y equals to one plus two x. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of k, the values of x for which the point has stationary points and determine the nature of each stationary point. Okay, only two keywords stationary point and nature. Okay, what is the stationary point? What is the nature? You write down your concept first. Whenever you see stationary point equal to zero gradient, to check the nature, second derivative more than zero or is it less than zero? More means minimum, less means maximum. That's all. That's a summary of the lesson. But the question gets haywire, left and right like that. Okay, let's solve. Quietly solve and check your answer with me. What could possibly be your mistake? Not putting the plus minus. Okay. Not putting the plus minus. Maybe you make mistake with your algebra. I'm not sure. They only say they need the uh, x coordinate. So don't bother finding for the y. Don't substitute. You got both of your x done. Now let's find the nature. To find the nature, I need to do second derivative. I got my second derivative, but how do I know whether this is more than zero or less than zero now? You need to input the x, right? You input the x. Inputting the x depending on your smartness. You don't have to go and check from the beginning. Okay. Look at this. Your teacher is a lazy person, so she always finds an easy method. Okay, she always finds an easy method. She realized that, oh my god, these two things are the same. So what she's going to do, she's going to indirectly put the K. But if you are hardworking, if you are hardworking, you go and do this. Okay, you take the X, you put into this. And then you go and find what is your second derivative. You can do this. And then you check. But I am lazy person, I don't do this. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do shortcut. What is 2X minus 3? It could possibly be K. Or the other one is k, negative k. And the question say k is a positive constant. If it is a positive constant, this has to be greater than zero. Let's use different color. This whole thing is greater than zero. And this whole thing is going to be lesser than zero. If you don't follow my technique, feel free to do from the beginning. I'm using shortcut. So which is what now? When x equal to 3 plus k over 2. We no need to write when anymore. Four.
Okay, ask question if you have any. Uh, let me check. Did I make the correct conclusion or not? Three minus k over two. Ah, see, even your teacher man and uh, made the wrong conclusions. This is more than zero, so supposed to be minimum. Less than zero, so supposed to be maximum.